Can you hear me? Or oh, this is just for recording, not for. Hello. Now you can hear me. Yes, I'm Felipe Hoffa. I'm super happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here that I'm going to come back next month for Fost Asia uh, with a completely different talk. And today I want to talk about uh, analyzing data with BigQuery. The first example I have is how to analyze 50 billion page views with Wikipedia. I know how would you do that if you had to analyze 50 billion page views? What tools do you use? Or why would you want to do that? Any answer? Are you awake? <laughs> OK, at least I got a reaction. Well, so yeah, my name is Felipe Hoffa. I've been working at Google for more than six years now. I started as a software engineer. And four years ago, I became a developer advocate. Um, a developer advocate is basically a software engineer with a license to speak. So I go all around the world giving talks, talking to people. And the most important part is not only talking to you, but also listening to you and bringing your feedback back to our teams. Um, feel free to interrupt me if you want to. If you don't have very long questions, I'm very happy to go uh, to, to stop and answer your questions as we go. Um, uh, since this is about, uh, we are at a startup space, I wanted to bring the idea of um, how do you create startups with data? Uh, what are the three basic elements? Which I basically listed here as ideas, data, and technology. Um, if we go back to 1996, everyone thought that search was solved. There were a lot of uh, search engines on the internet, um, you might remember them, they were all pretty bad. Like every time I had to search for something, I had to go side by side trying to find an answer. And everyone thought that that was it. Uh, so many smart people were doing search and not finding answers that probably there was no other way to do things. Until uh, Google showed up, 1998. And I remember those days because I remember that I had to remember the website with a lot of, lot of O's because that one was giving me the answers. And how did that happen? Um, so everyone else at the time was using the biggest servers possible. And Google instead started doing uh, things in a different way, uh, using small computers, a ton of small computers. Um, making them work together. But not only they had a different idea technology-wise, also algorithm-wise. Like looking at the internet, everyone could see the same web pages. Uh, the web is one, and everyone was able to download it. Well, not everyone was able to download the full, of, uh, the full internet, but mo uh, that's what these companies were doing. And they were looking at the same web pages, and they were searching within the same web pages, but Google was the first one to look, uh, to look not only at the content of each page, but at the connections between them. And that's how, where the page rank algorithm came from. Just looking at the connections and looking at the results in a different way, and that gave the origin to Google. Um, so yes, there was a new idea, page rank. There was, we, we had to collect the web data, and we had to create the technology to do so. Uh, we had to go from those massive one, two server architectures to hundreds of servers, and Google started publishing all of that, those ideas. And today, instead of only publishing the ideas, Google puts everything at your service. Uh, that's Google Cloud, and I, I love the two stories I heard today, like how Google Cloud is different from uh, the other alternatives you have. Um, but to come back to this, what you need is ideas, data, technology, and we are making it very easy for you to get data. We are sharing with you all of our technology. Uh, now it's all about you and your ideas, how you will make things it, uh, happen in a different way. And it is possible. 
Um, so yes, so we started sharing our technology uh, in 2002. We published our first paper, the Google File System, then MapReduce, Bigtable. Um, Bigtable, for example, is now a cloud product that anyone can use. Colossus and Flume and Millwheel, so Millwheel and Flume have been combined in Dataflow, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And the one I'm going to focus today is started with the Dremel paper. And the product, the external product, we call BigQuery. Who here knows BigQuery? Good, 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 good. It should be everyone. And at the end of this talk, it will be everyone. That's the whole point. Um, very quickly, what is BigQuery? BigQuery is an enterprise data warehouse that can analyze terabytes in seconds. It's simple. If you know SQL, you can use it. You don't even need to know SQL, but SQL is a pretty good place to start. Uh, it scales to petabytes. It doesn't matter how much data you have. You can put it there. Um, if you like working with R, with Python, with Data Studio, with Tableau, whatever, it can connect to BigQuery. And you have the ability to share data. Um, you, can, you, should, you can have private data. It doesn't matter how private it is, it will be stored securely and privately. Um, we have a lot of certifications. Uh, but you are also, if you want to share data with a partner or with anyone or with everyone here, you can do so. And everyone has a free terabyte of quota every month to write their own queries and play with it. So if you want to open your notebook now and start playing, it's ready for you. Um, and just to run my first demo, how many page views does Wikipedia have in a month? Any guess? Order of magnitude? Billion. How many? Billion. One billion? <laughs> Ten billion? Fifty billion? Uh, let me show you. I'll, I'll jump to my computer. So sorry, cameras for uh, coming here. Um, this one works? No. This way I have my hands to type code. Um, hello, yes. Um, so BigQuery has a web UI that makes uh, life pretty simple if you just want to start writing queries with your, over your data. Here I have stored the page views, monthly page views for Wikipedia for many years. Let's pick, I don't know, uh, March 2016. And this table has five columns. Basically, this page, uh, this title, at this hour, in this language, had this many requests. So it's not even a raw uh, log. It has everything summarized by hour. And it's a simple table. It just happens to have 437 gigabytes of data and 5 billion rows. That's a lot of rows. And if we want to know the total number of page views, we just need to add the requests for those 5 billion rows. And you should not do this at home, but we, the query took me three seconds to process 40 gigabytes of data. And the total is 20 billion page views in this month. Now, to make, uh, I could be cheating. I could have this pre-calculated, so uh, I would love for you to give me any random word. You want to yeah. say, just give me any word. word. Which one? More. More? Boat. 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 Let's see what happens with boat. So I'm going to run a regular expression. Any special type of boat? OK. Let me run a regular expression just to make things harder, where the title, let's say, it starts with bold, it has anything in the middle, and an AT, maybe Borat, maybe bold. And we can, let's do it in a special, in, and the language equals English, just to limit the results. And again, running a regular expression over 5 billion rows should not be something simple or fast to do. 
but it took six seconds. And then I, if I want to know what are the pages, um, I can add the title, I can group by the title, doo -doo -doo -doo. I can order by the first column in descending order, get the top 10. And where now it's your turn to guess if the first page is going to be bold or what. Uh, the first page was Brown versus Board of Education. That was a very important topic in March 2016, because if we jump to March 2014, we will get a different result. Ah, there is Borat, see, I, I told you. There's also the same boat, fresh of the boat. And yes, Brown versus the Board of Education was also super popular in 2014, and Borat, but oh, at that time, they were the Boston Marathon. Um, so yeah, we can start playing, we can jump to wherever we want to jump. That makes things pretty exciting. Uh, data is available for you to be queried at any moment uh, without, you don't have to care about the size or anything. That's pretty cool, no? Now, how does this work? What's the magic behind the query? One is that, um, we have all the data in distributed storage. This is data, you, we don't need to put data in specific servers. It's just uh, available at any time to be loaded by uh, computers from our distributed storage. Um, then many computers at the same time, as many, as many computers as much related to as much data we have, start reading this data in parallel. Uh, they start uh, filtering the data. Uh, grouping it, they send it to more computers further down the road, these computers group the data further, and then we get our mixer zero that outputs the final results. And that's the basic idea, that's what was behind, the secret behind what we just did. Um, so BigQuery is known, it's pretty cool because it, it's capable of analyzing uh, terabytes uh, of data in seconds. On the other hand, it's BigQuery is slow because it analyzes data in seconds. Uh, you usually want things to happen faster than that. You want your queries to run in less than a second. And for that, you should design a system. You should use a normal database. You, you can use MySQL. In this example, we have, like, when we're looking for one record with an index, uh, MySQL will be faster than BigQuery. But the more data you start analyzing, the more complex your queries get. Um, when you don't have time to design, you don't have three months to design a special system that will give answers in less than a second. But you just have a lot of data and you want a reply now. Uh, BigQuery scales fast and it's always able to give you those answers. So uh, pay attention to that kind of um, how each tool is different. Queries that you can take that you need in less than a second, stay wherever you are if you have them in less than a second. But if your queries are taking hours or days and you're having meetings with other people to define which indexes you should use and they will give you a system a week from now, just go to BigQuery and get your answers now. Um, how to load data into BigQuery? Let's say you have, uh, you want, you have logs, your own personal logs. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use Wikipedia logs. Uh, how do we load them into BigQuery? Uh, the first step is finding them. There is a web page, in this case, with a lot of them. And if you download one of these files, you can tell BigQuery to load it. In this case, it turns out that each file has a, it's a CSV, but instead of being separated with commas, it's separated with space. Instead of quotes, it doesn't use quotes. Uh, there I told it, this is, put, please put this file in this table, uh, take this file, and these are the columns, and the query will ingest that file, and that file will be ready for queries in a couple of minutes. That's for one file. Now, if we want years of data, that will take way longer. Um, each file waits a lot, you have to start browsing, uh, uh, downloading all of them, you might want to parallelize this. Uh, so for that we have other tools like Dataflow based on Apache Beam. I'm, I'm not going to give a talk on Dataflow now, 
but just to show you a little piece of code, this is how I get one file from Wikipedia. I download it and then I save it into Google Cloud Storage. Pretty cool function. It doesn't do much other than download and copy to Google Cloud Storage. And now if I want to run this over every hour of every day, of every month, of every year, I want to scale this and that I can do with Dataflow. And for Dataflow, I just I can write code like this. I create a Beam pipeline, a Dataflow pipeline, and then I give to this function a list of all the URLs where I can find these files. Um, now I can just tell it, run this. Google will take care of scaling this up as how, uh, into many servers, downloading these files. Everything will be loaded into cloud storage in a few minutes or an hour maybe, depends on how much data we want to download and how many servers we allow Dataflow to scale up to. And we will have our files loaded there. And I can also with Python start creating my BigQuery tables. In this case, I'm telling BigQuery, look at these files that I put in cloud storage. Just look at them and allow me to run queries over these files. I don't even need to load the data into BigQuery, just need to point to the hundreds of files that I have here. Um, in fact, I don't even need to decompress these files. Uh, BigQuery is capable of reading gzip files, and then in BigQuery I have that table which I left here, I called it mm -mm -mm -mm. views Wikipedia GCS. Basically this is my end result. I'm just telling, t look at everything that is in this folder in Google Cloud Storage. These are CSV files, gzip, accept bad records in case there are some bad lines, um, deli delimit don't look at delimiters, and now I have one line, one row. Uh, I don't even, in this case, I didn't even bother to tell me query the schema of my, my files. Um, I can run something like select star, limit 10. And this will look at the files stored at cloud storage and decompress them on the fly. Uh, let's see how the internet is working. Yeah, I'm tethering. But yeah, it's pretty fast. And now I'm getting one row per line, which is cool. I cannot do a lot with this because I still need to parse it. But again, parsing it, for that I can write a different query, a view. A view is just a Another table that's looking at that table, my code is here. This is how I'm parsing inside the query each line of the logs, and that gives me the ability that to see, to do something like query view, select star. Again, I want just 10 lines of it just to watch it. And um, yeah, I didn't do much to these files other than storing them on cloud storage. Uh, but thanks to my view, now I have them parsed and I can see each line and I can start running my computing. And what I would really love to do now is to copy these files inside the query so they are stored with our special sauce. This is what I have. Yeah, so this all started with the Dremel paper, Interactive Analysis of Web Scale Datasets a paper from 2010, and this is where we showed our basic ideas. Um, another basic idea, other than using a lot of servers, is storing data in columnar format. Instead of storing record by record, line by line, we store them by column. So then when you run your queries, they are super fast because we are looking at the full, uh, at the whole column every time you ask for a column. So. Once you are look, even if you have your files outside BigQuery and BigQuery can look at them, you might want to import the files inside BigQuery for everything to run faster. And as I show you, this is the tr serving tree, which has also improved a lot since 2010. Uh, in 2010, we were not able to do joins, and the big limit of this 
uh, architecture is Mixer Zero. Like, if we could only output as much data as Mixer Zero could fit, but we gave the three the ability to instead uh, send data back to the distributed storage. Uh, we gave the, the ability to shuffle data. When you're able to shuffle, you can run massive joins. You can run massive group bytes, massive joins. Um, so don't be afraid of just mixing terabyte tables with together. And this is how the serving tree looks now. Now it's a dynamic tree that, so of course, it starts with columnar storage, but the serving tree is capable of shuffling like at a really, really fast speed. These are stats for a complex query, like if you had a super complex query with joins and over 100 billion rows, with the query it would take like 20 seconds to be run. Uh, if, if we had to read two, four terabytes of data, uh, if, if it had to run 100 billion regular expressions, if it had to shuffle 270 gigabytes of data. That's a normal query, big query, and it just took 20 seconds. If you had to do this outside the query, if you had to run it serially and you were limited by one computer, to read four terabytes of data from a hard drive would take 12 hours. Um, to run a uh, hundred billion regular expressions would take 27 hours if each, re if each regular expression uh, took one microsecond. And to shuffle data it would take at least 37 minutes. So for us to be able to run all of this in 20 seconds, it's pretty, pretty cool. Now, what about indexing? Uh, if you know about databases, you want to index your data, and if you're using BigQuery, you can forget about that. In BigQuery, we do not index data. Each uh, query is a full column scan, and that's why it takes seconds, and not milliseconds, because it just looks at the full column. And you really, and that makes things fast when you want to look at uh, the whole table. Um, what about evolving schemas? Um, as I was showing you, we have the capacity to parse uh, full rows on the fly. So for example, in data sets like GitHub, which is the topic I'm going to be talking about in Fosatia, um, you will be able to, you, you are able to store, for example, uh, a column that has just text data as a JSON column and you can parse that JSON on the fly. This is how I would do it. And if you want to do more magic stuff, if you know SQL but you want to start doing things that SQL cannot do, we also support user-defined functions. We can run arbitrary JavaScript code inside a SQL query that will run on the cluster. And for example, things that I have tried is running leverage that distance to find similar strings. This is the code I would use. And the secret behind how, why are we, why are we using JavaScript uh, UDFs and why are they able to run fast is because the serving tree uh, calls uh, Chrome V8, which is also our, uh, the, our JavaScript runner that started for Chrome, but now we have it inside the query and we're able to run JavaScript code pretty, pretty fast. Now, JavaScript code is cool, but you might want to run C code, and that makes life much harder. But this happened like a month ago. Uh, let me skip. Ah. Where my ex-teammate Francesc, at his new company, was trying to run C code in BigQuery. And it turns out you can compile C code to WebAssembler, WASM, and he was able, and WASM can be run inside JavaScript, and Frances was able to run it. And that made us all super, super happy. Uh, he was just complaining that to simple double a number, run a C code that doubles a number, it took three seconds to run. So he, that for him was a slow. And again, uh, my reply at 2 p.m. that day was, oh, that's super cool, but know that three seconds is a measure of latency, not of throughput. Of course, if you try to calculate one row, it will take three seconds, but the question is how much will it take you to process 10,000 rows? And so 17 minutes later, I had my answer. 
to run, to go over 10,000 rows, it didn't take uh, 30,000 seconds, it took only 50 seconds. This is, uh, this is how we show how we scale. And then one hour later, after running a couple of optimizations of his query, I was able to process in C code inside BigQuery with his code, uh, 5 billion rows in 50 seconds. And at that point, process said that I was just bragging, which is <laughs> what, what I'm doing now. Uh, but yes, yeah, you, you can run that, that kind of uh, magic stuff. If you try it, please share your results. I want to see where we can go. Um, connecting ideas. This is, uh, let me go back to Wikipedia. Um, as I would, blah, 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 blah. somehow I was able to talk before. Okay. Gracias. Okay. Um, so this is Redash. Redash is an open source dashboard software. There's uh, many ways to visualize data. I want to run this query with Redash. Here I'm going to look at um, I'm going to, I'm looking at, uh, this is August 2014, uh, I'm looking for the Robin Williams Wikipedia page. Uh, that was uh, the month when he died, but let's see what happened on Wikipedia during that month. So here I'm able to visualize this curve, which shows that he had like around 100 page views per hour at that time until we got the sad news. Then it jumped to 1.5 million page views during that hour on Wikipedia. And then it decayed uh, as the news cycles uh, happened. But then instead of having 100 page views per hour, he got like 4,000, 5,000, uh, 2,000 page views per hour. And the, the question here is, um, Okay, th this is sad, but at the same time, it's pretty interesting to see uh, what happens on Wikipedia as news happen. And the question I have here is you, if you have a log like this, a log of page views per hour, how do you find related pages? How do you find a page that, what's related to this topic? How do we mine this with a SQL query? Any ideas? What would you do? Do you have any ideas? Anyone? Just analyzing a, a page view, a log page view, uh, a page view, a log of page views. Um, so, uh, what, I'm, what I can also do with BigQuery is run correlations. So here I have my query. In this case, on one hand, I have one timeline, the timeline of Robin Williams. And I can compare it with the timeline of every other web page on Wikipedia during the same month. And I can look at the correlation of those timelines. And I can get what timelines have the top correlation. And these are my results. So Robin Williams, the top correlated page in number of page views per hour was his filmography, Good Morning Vietnam, Zelda Williams, Mocha Monday. Uh, th the results make a lot of sense. And this all showed up, and I'm able to build a graph of related content just by looking at the different timelines. So please go ahead and play with this kind of data. Mm, let me get back to the presentation. Any questions before I continue? No? OK, I will continue. Uh, these are my chart, my query. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about how BigQuery fits on the enterprise. Some features that are closer to the enterprise world. Uh, so yes, of course, it's awesome to be able to be agile. It's awesome to have an elastic database. It will scale. Uh, it's, it's cost efficient. It's compatible with your, the tools you already use. It's secure, it, uh, top security, Google security and it's serverless and fully managed. You don't need to configure or turn on anything. It's just working for you. Um, this is highly, highly available analytics for us. You put your data here, and you are able to run queries. Um, it, for big corporations, so 
it, normally BigQuery charges per query. Uh, that's pretty cool for people that are starting, for people that want to use a free terabyte every month. But for huge corporations, they have access to flat rate pricing. And now we support standard SQL. We have uh, ODBC, JDBC connectors, DML, uh, Stackdriver to monitor everything that is happening, to be able to audit your costs, your users. And we have strong identity access and management. Um, so if, this is how you would monitor your BigQuery usage with Stackdriver. It's all automated and happens for free. Identity and access management, you can have different kind of users with different kind of permissions, auditing, etc. And we have a lot of partners uh, working with BigQuery, uh, which can help you to ingest data, to do ETL, to do analytics, visualization, uh, services, etc. So, to wrap this talk, uh, I want you to remember that BigQuery is different because you can analyze terabytes of data in seconds. You don't need any servers. It has a terabit network. Uh, that's how we are able to do things at this speed. You don't need to pre-plan your queries. You don't need to have a committee to make decisions beforehand. You don't need data locality. Data is stored on the network. You don't need indexes. You don't need partitioning. But BigQuery supports partitioning. You just don't need it. It's always on. It has no doubt. It has. It's highly available. Of course, sometimes it goes down and everything, as everything, but it's highly available. It's private, private, but shares data. You can have unlimited users. You can stream data in if you want to stream data. If you have real uh, live data that you want to bring inside BigQuery, you can do it at more than 100,000 rows per second. And the big point is how do we enable your ideas to flourish without uh, having to worry about the, the technology behind it. And this is what I had. So if you want to find me, you can find me on Reddit, on Stack Overflow, on Twitter. If you want to give me feedback, you can go to the URL. And I'll be super happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. I want to take a picture of you. You all look so pretty. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> do we do we do we have any questions? Do we do we do we? Felipe? Oh yeah, we have one. Hi, I'm Kelvin. Hi Kelvin. Hi, uh, um so does that mean that um by knowing how to you write an SQL script I can literally go to all the website and um now or extract the data from there and so so uh, if i understand the question is if you can download data from any website yeah yeah no, so so the part that you need to do is uh, you need to be the data engineer if you have a pipeline that brings data into be query uh, you will be able to query the data once it's inside now, sometimes, especially with public data, uh, you have other people doing that for you. So we have websites like the HTTP Archive, which I love. HTTP Archive, let me bring it in. Um, if you want to look at the top million uh, homepages on the internet, they are all loaded here on the query. And you can start writing queries that analyze what the top million web pages are, are doing. Um, I have this one. Uh, so we were running this experiment. Just imagine you have access to all of these web pages. And now you want to say, uh, you want to see what are the most popular JavaScript libraries. You can do that. Now, if there is any particular JavaScript library that you want to find, you can also find it, on, and you can count how many servers use it. For example, uh, there is a library that does, um, you can mine Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, with, uh, with JavaScript. If you users end up at your web, on your website, you can mine cryptocurrency, which might not be a nice thing, 
but what we did here, this, you have the whole discussion is, uh, my friends used BigQuery to find all the web pages in, within this million that are mining cryptocurrency. And they found more than a thousand websites doing this. How else would you run a query like that uh, if you don't ha didn't have access to the data and to do it immediately? Including at that time, there was a Brazilian government website that was eating all my CPU. Uh, so, and I published this and the tweet w went viral here and in Brazil. So, yeah, you can do this kind of uh, games right now. Thanks, Kelvin. So, is there, I mean, I know I can go and take a look, but is there anything built on top to help visualize uh, the query data? Because I might not, uh, if I'm a small org, I don't have really need for petabytes, and that's good as I say. But my first immediate need would be after I analyze it, visualize it in different ways. Mm -hmm. So, that feels like an engineering interface. I'm just curious, like, how you've used this, or what you've tried to use it with to help visualization. Uh, Excellent question. Thank you for the question. Uh, so, how do we visualize data with BigQuery? Um, there are many ways. Uh, for example, if I have the results of my query here, I, I can save it to Google Sheets and I can immediately start visualizing them with, in a sheet. There's open source software like um, Redash. And now, recently, uh, we, we launched a Data Studio, which is a totally free visualization framework that can connect to more than 200 sources and it's completely free and you can create your dashboards here without knowing any SQL. So, yes, uh, just load Data Studio and you can start using it. It's really pretty. Just let me click on a sample dashboard, which in this case is backed by Google Analytics, but it could be backed uh, by BigQuery or any of your sources. Data Studio. Thank you. Someone else? Yes, please. I have a long hand here. Hi, my name is Chong Ming. Hello, Chong Ming. I'm just curious, like over the years that Google uh, BigQuery has been running, has there been any instances that it crashed by some users? And what are the causes, if there's any? Uh -huh. Uh, so, what's the, uh, what our high availability stats? So yes, BigQuery has gone down and we are pretty transparent about it. Um, if you go to the Google Cloud Health Dashboard, no, not healthcare, health status dashboard, uh, you will be able to find, like, if you are, if you want to see how how much uh, BigQuery fails, we are pretty transparent on when has it happened, why has it happened. Um, no system it has 100% availability. Um, we do have an SLA of 99. Point, I don't remember the exact number, but it's pretty good. Um, the whole history is here for you to, to, to analyze. Mm? Thanks. Great. Any questions? Any other questions from the crowd? So yeah, w what I would add there is the difference between running your own servers and having your servers run by Google is that when your servers crash, it's up to you to uh, work very hard all night long to keep them on. When something crashes at Google, uh, you have a full team of Googlers distributed around the world uh, fixing the servers as fast as possible while you eat breakfast, which makes things pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so. Nice. All right. Can we give our hands, hands to Hank? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I'll see you in March. <laughs>